Welcome to Tricks of the Trade. This is that perfect smile and that perfect nose, too. Hi, today we're going to spend some time teaching you some basic skills on how to keep dental hygiene and gum health for your dogs. It's very simple and it's not that much different than what you do at home. We're going to be using just a basic, I like a medium bristle brush, not the very hard ones and not the soft ones. This is just an average brush that you can pick up at any store. Have a small pail, small dish. You want to get some hydrogen peroxide and baking soda your traditional dentist wear teeth cleaner. This is a tooth scaler. You can pick this up at the dog show stands or any of the wholesale catalog companies that come in the mail. Tooth scaler. I'm going to show you scaling first because usually when I'm doing this kind of cleaning on the actual scrubbing with the baking soda and the peroxide, I do like to keep the mouth rinsed periodically while I'm doing this technique. So at that point when we're doing that, I'm going to take you back to the bathtub. I can show you the scaling though because that needs to be done and that needs to be done before we go ahead and put the peroxide and baking soda finish on the teeth. Now we all, we've all done this on our two and three and four year old dogs where we've picked up the teeth and we've seen this nasty plaque build up. I don't care how many milk bones you give your dog, you're still going to have this nasty plaque build up. If you take your toothbrush, your peroxide and your baking soda, every single time you bathe this dog once a week or once every other week for dog showing purposes, if you scrub the teeth, you'll never get that plaque build up. This is a five-year-old dog, and he's probably had his teeth done last when he was about two. So we're going to be using him today. This is very simple. You simply take the tooth scaler. Now, rather than going in blunt and just scraping over the tooth, I like to go up to the gum line, lift up the gum gently, and actually begin my stroke under the gum. Be careful not to cut the gum. I press hard against the tooth and I pull it straight down. Go up under the gum, pull straight down. Up under the gum and straight down. The thing that you want to avoid doing is taking this way and going backwards. You don't want to be pushing this nasty plaque and bacterial build up up under the gum because of course what's going to happen, you're going to create a nasty gum infection. If your dog has chronic halitosis or bad breath, many times you'll find it's because this plaque buildup has become so intense on the teeth, it actually creates a very bad odor in the dog's mouth. So that's the first thing that I would check. So once again, you want to go under the gum line and pull straight down. This is just very simple. It's called scaling the teeth. If you've been working with your dog its whole life, this again is a very unevasive technique. It doesn't hurt the dog. And as you can see here, this dog's been shown his whole life. He's so used to people examining his mouth, examining his teeth. He's very passive, very passive. Now there's some staining on this teeth, which will come out with that peroxide and baking soda compound that we're going to make. It's going to be like a paste that we're going to make in the back. And again, you want to be careful that you're actually pushing. I'm just pushing. I'm not cutting into the gum. I'm simply taking the edge of this scaler, and on the top, there's no sharp mechanisms. And I'm going to push up against that gum line, then come down against the tooth, and with strong pressure, scale it over the teeth. You need to do that on each and every tooth in the dog's mouth. Down in here, you can certainly go like this. That's no problem. Just make sure that as you're coming down into the gum that you're actually not pressing any of that plaque back up underneath the gum. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, you're going to lift up the gum and come straight down the back. Look at that. Is that big piece that just flicked off? Up and down. Up and down. You can see I'm not hurting the dog. He'd be reacting. 
He's just a big, mushy, spoiled house pet now in his life. He's six. And I think at this point, he just likes anybody to fool with him in any way. If you start your dog off as a very young dog, every time they get a bath, take your toothbrush and brush over the teeth. By the time you need to use this scaling technique, the dog is already used to you being in his mouth all the time. It's not uncommon for me to have just strange pets come into my pet grooming shop. The people want their teeth scaled, and I always tell them I'll be happy to do it as long as the dog lets me into his mouth. The vets knock the dog out and use anesthesia because they don't want to get bit. Now look at that. Really, this is a this is a modest, a moderate amount of buildup on this dog's teeth. It's not it's not terrible, but it's not slight either. Certainly needs attention. If you allow this plaque to stay on this dog's teeth, you're going to end up with infected gums. As it is right now, and I'm hoping you'd be able to see this, especially down here along this tooth. Can you see how bright red this is at the base of the tooth? I'm hoping that that's coming up on the... Already, just because of this little bit of plaque buildup that's on this dog here, the gum is getting irritated, and it's not going to take a lot longer in time for the gums to become infected. So this is a wonderful opportunity for this dog to get his teeth cleaned. And there's a lot of advantages for you doing your own work on your dog because the most dangerous part of getting your dog's teeth cleaned certainly isn't the scaling and the polishing, it's the anesthesia at the vet. A lot of dogs react poorly to that. I know I've got a 13-year-old now, and every month I put, his, put him up in the bathtub and I scrub and scale his teeth and his gums. I just don't want him to go to the vet and be put under anesthesia. At his age, it's too dangerous. Again, on this side, the same thing. I'm lifting up the gum and coming down. When you're down here, you can certainly go up and down. That's not going to hurt anything. It's unless, you're, unless the enamel is damaged somehow or unordinary on your dog's teeth, you can take any of these scalers and scrape very hard, and it's not going to hurt the dog's teeth. Again, too, it's a whole lot nicer to do this process if the mouth is dry. Here's a real good one. I'm going to try to flip this around a little bit so we can see better here. Now, here we go. Here's a good back one. Again, I'm just going to lift up the gum and come straight down. Look at that. See? The whole thing came off. Okay, we're going to do it again back here. Lift up the gum, come straight down. I hope my big head's not in the way. It's hard to be, get the right angle. There. Yeah. You can hear I'm pressing fairly, fairly hard up in this little rooted area of the tooth. There's the adjoining tooth. Let's get that all polished and shiny and clean. Good boy, donkey. That's a good boy. All right. You can do the bottom teeth just as easily as the top. Okay, after you've gotten all the plaque removed with the scaling, it's nice to polish the teeth. A good time to do all of this is in the bathtub with the dog's weekly or bi-weekly bath. But for the purposes today, we're going to go ahead and finish this off here on the table. I've just taken some regular baking soda, put it in a little pan. We've got some peroxide here. I'm simply going to take the peroxide, pour it over the surface of the brush. We're going to create 
a little bit of a paste on the surface of this toothbrush. Just like you would your own teeth, take a soft bristle or medium bristle brush and simply brush over the surface of the teeth. You want to pay attention to the back teeth, the bottom, and the front. If you have your dog in the tub, you can stop for a few moments, rinse out the mouth. I'm going to go ahead and pour this mixture again. By placing your thumb behind the canine, push through and brace the top of the mouth. You'll be able to keep the mouth of the dog open and pay just as much attention to the interior of the teeth. That's good, yes. Yucky tasted stuff. I know some people like to use toothpaste. Really, this is a much better product to use on the teeth. It is going to polish the teeth. It will whiten the teeth. It's much healthier for the gums. If you can get your dog used to a commercial toothpaste that has the baking soda and peroxide base, that's fine too. I've tried some of them and the dog seemed actually to object less to this passive peroxide baking soda compound than to the sweeter saccharin tasting toothpastes on the market for kids or people. What I also like about this is because I'm putting the baking soda on the surface of the brush, I can actually feel the grittiness. There's a certain grittiness or grind, if you will, that this baking soda has. You can feel it sliding across the top of the teeth, and I believe that really, really helps and aid you in getting the surface staining and taking off any little pieces of particles or plaque yet that remain on the teeth. I do like using this. Again, slide your finger behind the canine. See how it bridges? This part of my hand right here is actually resting on top of the gum which is actually resting on top of the back of these teeth. So when the dog tries to shut its mouth, it can't. So you can keep the dog's mouth open for a nice period of time that way. You don't need two people or three people holding the dog down. That's just going to create more of a struggle. If you're working with a young dog or a puppy who you've not started this process on, it's very nice when you have the dog in the tub to just gently take the toothbrush as a young puppy and just start this very gently. You don't have to open up the mouth and really, really cleanse well these back teeth or the inside teeth as I do with these older dogs because they don't have any buildup yet. And by doing that, every time you bathe your dog, over the lifetime of your dog, by the time they're three, four, five, six years and older, where you have to get way back into here on the inside surface, they've grown so accustomed to you working on them, it's a much, much more pleasant experience for everyone, and they don't object so much, do they? No, they don't. So, now we have that perfect smile, too.